Hey folks, and welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk Whiskey. I'm Nick here with you as always, and thanks for joining us for episode number 66. So we've headed back to the single malt side of our whiskey reviews, and it's a single malt from the Isla region of Scotland, and it's Laphroaig Select. So just a little bit of a backstory. Went to the liquor store looking for a single malt, and you know, traipsing about the, uh, the store trying to find something decent. And then I thought about Lefroy. It seems like it's sort of a staple in the single malt category, especially of idle whiskeys that I should review and get to eventually. But they didn't have the entry level 10 year. All they had was the Lefroy Select and the Lefroy Lore, which some of you may be after out there. It's uh, pretty popular in terms of how highly it's priced right now, if that's any indication of it. And this was, you can imagine, about maybe 10 of these bottles were sort of stacked up in a little clump. And, and it looked like the lore was out, but I noticed a, a black cardboard tin behind it, and somebody, I think somebody who worked there was probably trying to hide it for the end of the shift to make sure nobody else got it before him or her. So anyway, we've got the Lefroig Select, and this is an expression that's taking us into the next phase of, of whiskey, really. And we're already there. We've already seen it a lot. But with the no age statement, whiskeys, a lot of times what we're seeing now is the special expressions that have different finishes, different maturation techniques, multiple maturation techniques, as this is different types of barrels, not just like one or two, but in, in this case there's more than that. Or just different different styles, some grain whiskeys, some rye whiskeys, just experimenting with different things, trying to get new expressions out there to stretch the juice until there's enough aged product to bring back a lot of those older whiskeys to sell at a relatively reasonable price and put the age statement back on there. So anyway, what we have here in the Lefroy Select is they went back about 70 to 80 years to a man named Ian Hunter. He was the last person within that the family tradition of owning Lefroy and running it, who really innovated in terms of going to America and selecting the ex-bourbon barrels over there to bring over to Scotland to mature the Lofroigan because up until that point it had just been the European oak casks. You know, a lot of ex-sherry, Pedro Jimenez casks, that sort of thing that was aging these single malts. And so that was really an innovation and it was inspirational to the master distiller at Lofroig. Now, John Campbell, to, to re, to innovate, go back to the past, take back from the past and, you know, grab from the future, that sort of thing, sticking to tradition, but still innovating at the same time, which is really neat. And so what we get here is a spirit bottle that 40% ABV, so nothing crazy there, but it's, it's got a bunch of different casts in terms of its maturation. So there's the staple to Lefroy, the quarter cast. You have the Oloroso Sherry cast. You have the, the Pedro Jimenez hogshead, you know, seasoned, seasoned in these hogsheads. And then we have the ex bourbon barrels. And then you also have, just to add a little twist onto it, is new American oak barrels. Not filled with bourbon at all, just new American oak barrels in a matured in there. Finished if you really want to put it like that for six months in the highest reaches of their warehouses where you know it gets to the hottest temperature during the summer months. So there's a little backstory there. Now Lafroy, I gotta say their marketing is absolutely fantastic. They really make no bones about the fact that 
They are a super peaty scotch single malt, and some people like it, and some people just do not like it, and they're totally open to all those opinions, and they've had all those opinions since 1815 or whatever it started. I should, I should know. Yeah, 1815. I think it's all over the bottle. I should know. But for some of the, the newer people, if you're looking out to buy a Lafroig, or some people, if you have Lafroig, still have the bottle and everything, you should have a little leaflet, a little packet here that's going to give you some nice little information on just what you got. So you don't only just have the whiskey, right? This isn't specific to the whiskey. So if you're looking for information about this, go online or read, read your tin, read the back of this for more information. But this is just about the, the FOL or the Friends of Lafroy. So I'm throwing marketing for them right now, but I, I think it's really interesting to get people you know, thinking and, and interested in whiskey and that sort of thing. But anyway, the big advertisement here is you can claim your free square foot of our island at Lafroy. And so what you do is you go in and you enter, what the hell is it? This little unique number on the back and you get your own little plot of land, both literally at the distillery, there's a little plot for you, and figuratively or virtually really, is you get this little subset of their website where you can get news and updates and you can get points for every bottle that you get. I don't know if higher priced bottles, like an 18 or something like that, would give you more points or anything, but you can use those points against the merchandise that is in their shop. So that's actually pretty cool. And you can also talk with people that are you know, near your plot of land and that sort of thing, and you're basically leasing it for life. And I think they said the rent, if you go there, is having you get a, a, a dram of Lafroy for some of the good stuff. So that's just a little interesting spin that Lafroy is doing. Maker's Mark does something similar, which I think I talked about before. But it's just, it's that little bit of provenance that you add with whiskey. For all the money you're paying, you know, it's nice to get a little bit more out of it. And it's building the community of people who are interested in this stuff, like you and I. So let's, let's take a look at it. First thing, that we noticed, and I didn't mention this before, is this has a really nice light color. What the hell is wrong with this? First it was in the green bottle, it had me skeptical. They don't want me knowing what's in here. And then I'm looking at it, and there's this really pale, sort of, almost like a, a crystal gold, like a glimmering, uh, very light, faint gold color. Why is that? Because it's natural. There's no caramel coloring in it. Go figure. It's also, I think it's on the bottle somewhere on here about it being natural. Yeah, bottle that natural color. So that's pretty cool. We love that. We want the whiskey as unadulterated as possible. Let's go in for the nose. Now, this isn't like some whiskeys, some art bag expressions, just pops into my mind, but you get a real blast of pee. It's nothing that punches you right in the mouth, but it's that nice, fragrant, seaside peatiness that's really got a, a fruity, rich undertone, but the whole thing feels like it's presented on this cloud of just fresh baked bread, this light biscuit notes and aromas, which is really unique. It's very mellow. It's not pungent peat, that peat reek that they talk about that really sets the Lafroy lovers from the Lafroy haters apart. So, yeah, very, very nice. Almost a tropical fruit note in here that you get some some rums, and I've also noticed it with a couple uh, Bastille French whiskey, I've also noticed that with too. It's just this real 
orange, orange fruits is what I'm getting. Maybe that's not so tropical, but it's that, that tanginess that's in there rather than the, the succulent, rich, deep fruits. Let's go for a taste. Mm. The peat is, is beautiful, and it's not really heavy, like sulfur taste or anything like that, but it's got a nice lemony quality to it, really just nice brine saltiness, if you will, the peat is really, really intriguing. Going along with that fresh baked bread and biscuity notes, that peat and the whole flavor profile that's in there has a very powerful buttery note to it. It's really, really quite interesting. It's a nice creamy, buttery, very airy texture to it. It doesn't, it's not heavy, it doesn't weigh down on you. But it's got a lightness to it, which is really, it's really interesting. And I've got to be honest, this is actually the first Lafroy that I've had. I know, shocking, right? But I, I haven't been able to lay my hands on it before in the past, so just so happens that this is going to be my first experience with it. Now it's not the tenure. I already know that. I already know from the flavor profiles that that, you know, a lot of people say that it's like as a medicinal band aid taste to it. I'm ready for it. Bring it on. Whenever the, the, whenever the state controlled liquor stores want to bring in the, the tenure, you know, instead of just their, what they call their luxury whiskeys, or their premium, or very premium, or super premium. They've got a really, really intelligent way of categorizing all these whiskeys. Sorry, I didn't start to get off on the little high whisk there, but anyway, we'll get around to the tent at some point. So, that fruitiness that I got on the aroma isn't so much present in the taste for me. What I get is that the peatiness, obviously, with the brine, sea salt characteristics. A little, little hint of, of lemon. It's got a little lemon zest into it, a little, little spirit, lemon juice, if you will. Just a slight, slight bit before it, it goes off into the background. Now, at 40% ABV, I feel like there's more, there could have been more to this un, unadulterated spirit, you know, before it was watered for bottling at 40%. But if they had just bumped it up, I feel like Freud, I think the 10 year old, correct me if I'm wrong, this bottle is at 43% ABV. I don't see any reason why this couldn't be 43 at the very least. But I understand the marketing team and, and everybody, they've got to stretch their product. But I would think for some somebody like Lefroy, who is probably not hurting too much for cash, could bump the ABV up a little bit. Yeah, it's going to knock down on bottles some, but it's really not that big of a deal. So let's go in for one last perusal, and then we'll call it. I think what's playing pretty nicely, in terms of it not being overpowering for a certain flavor, something like that, is the fact that you have all these different types of casks used to mature this whiskey. So you can tell that you've got some of those Oloroso sherry casks butting up with maybe some of that new American oak. And really, think about it, those things sort of cancel each other out if they're used at a certain, you know, age for a certain amount of time. Now we don't know 
how long they're aged in, in each of these. So that would be interesting to know, only because you have a very strong flavor profile in sherry that you can pick out if something is exclusively matured in that. And the same thing for a new American oak barrel, you would definitely be able to notice that if it were aged exclusively in that. So I think while it is nice, the overall result, I'm saying, I like. But in terms of canceling each other out, I think there's definitely some of that going on there. But that's just me. I know I said one more, but that was like overtime there. Anyway. I tell you, for being as light as this is, it's nice in almost the middle of September here, and it's still like 84 degrees out, which is, for me, growing up on the East Coast, is just unheard of, really. I mean, Mother Nature's got to get with it. I don't know what's going on here. So, anyway. For episode number 66, the Lafroy Select gets an 86. It's a little bump up from last week's score. I know some of you probably think that was a little bit low last week, but that's all right. So, anyway, next week we'll have an Irish whiskey for you. And until then, you're going to drink, drink responsibly, as always, and we'll see you next time.